Okay, so we're moving right along into chapter two, dealing with fractions and decimal operations. And one of the things that you need to have is a more of a positive attitude to fractions. And you don't want to just say, oh, I hate fractions, because that's automatically going to put a block um, for you to receive information. And I think you're going to like this first section because it deals with stuff that you have already seen before. Just like some of the stuff in chapter one, you've seen a lot of this stuff. So here we go. 2.1, adding and subtracting fractions. So we deal with fractions with a common denominator. And then we also have those uncommon denominators, but for 2.1, you're just dealing with a common denominator. So to do that, we just have to add or subtract fractions with the common denominator. We write the sum, remember sum stands for addition, or the difference, which stands for subtraction, of the numerators over the denominator. So here's a visual that I found. So you have two fourths. So you have the, this two fourths is represented by the blue, and you have one fourth, this green over here. So that's going to equal a total of three fourths. You have one, two, three. And so to give you three fourths. So all you have to do is add the numerator or subtract the numerator and make sure you put it over the denominator because the denominator really just tells us how big the pieces are. So you can see this is a fourth is one fourth of the whole entire pizza. So some of the things that I've noticed over the years, some common mistakes, is to add the denominators. Okay, you never want to change that size. If they're all the same size, keep them that same size. You just want to count up how many you have. And then simplify the answer if needed. And by that I mean to factor out any um, common denominators that you can to make it a little bit easier. And then if the answer is an improper fraction, for this particular section, they want you to write it as a mixed number. As you go up in math, you'll just leave it as an improper fraction, but just wanted to remind you that um, we should be comfortable with changing an improper fraction to a mixed number and vice versa. So here's some examples. So we have our size is ninths, one ninth. I have two ninths and then I have five ninths. So I'm going to add my numerators over my denominator. Seven ninths. And then here's one for subtraction. Seven minus three. Remember, we don't add these or subtract them. Seven minus three is four eighths. But I can simplify this. So I know that I can divide both by four. So that's going to be one half. And you can write this here if you want. Or you can show it a little closer, however it works out for you. But we all should get to one half as our final answer. So they were probably thinking the textbook publishers were like, eh, this is a little bit too easy for a sixth grader. So we're going to add a little bit more um, of a challenge to it. And so we talk about evaluating expressions. And an expression, it, and we'll get to what that definition is, but it's a little bit of algebra. And again, the variable definition, you've seen this before. But as we go through the year, you're going to be getting introduced more to, to um, some algebra functions that you probably haven't seen. So here we go. The basic of algebra is that you have a variable, and that's just a letter used to represent one or more numbers. Now we used to use X back in my day, but we've changed that more. And it really, as long as you recognize that it's a letter um, and not an operation, like an X would be confused with multiplication. And then we have our algebraic expression. It's a very fancy way of saying all it is is just numbers. So it has three things has numbers, variables, and operations. And remember, op our main operations that we're dealing with is add, subtract, multiply, and divide. 
So an algebraic expression has numbers, variables, and operations. If it was what we call a numerical expression, it wouldn't have the variables. But with an algebraic expression, we need to do something with it. So we evaluate it. And again, I know you've seen these before. So I like to say plug and solve because that's technically what you're doing. They're going to give you a value for that variable. And all you need to do is plug it into the expression and solve it. And then I like to say use um, parentheses because I like to give it a little hug when you substitute it in. You can think of somebody traveling, and sometimes it's nice to give them a little hug. So here we go. Here's your example. Evaluate the expression x plus 5 ninths when x equals 3 ninths. So first thing I need to do is just plug and solve. So wherever I see this x, I put in a 3 ninths. You can give it a little hug if you want. For this particular one, you didn't really need to give it a hug, but it's always a good habit to get into. Now, 3 plus 5, because our denominator's the same, so I'm just going to add my numerators. 3 plus 5 equals 8 ninths. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 2.1.